I, I can remember coming down the hill from a meeting, which, you know, it, all the pressures and stresses of the job uh, are upon you when you're in the meeting, and I'm flying down the hill after this meeting, coming back to the office here in the village, and it's a, you know, it's an absolutely gorgeous sort of late summer day, and all of that goes away for about five, ten minutes when you're on your bike coming back down. And the, the very first time that I used, began to use a bike um, regularly was at Cambridge, and, uh, and uh, everyone did. Uh, and uh, in fact, there were huge bike traffic jams uh, at certain corners. Uh, and no, it feels, it feels good to get to class because part of it's like you're outside already for a little bit. You got to get warmed up some. And the other part of it is I don't know, you get to, get to experience your commute differently. Um, but yeah, it feels good. It's nice. So uh, commuting by bike, I probably have taken, I was keeping track, but uh, um, kind of got uh, behind on keeping in track, but uh, uh, probably almost a thousand trips easy this year by bike instead of taking my car. That, uh, it gets you moving, it gets your heart rate up. As far as nature goes, it's great to pass by Taylor Lake and see all the geese and the swans sitting in there. Um, but, you know, six in the morning is really not much out. Uh, you know, lunchtime you go out, you go ride, you go home, or go to the shop, get something to eat for lunch, you go to the grocery store, then you see more, more of the people in town, you get to say hi as you pass by, the people in the Village Green. Uh, really, uh, really um, brings you a little closer to the community in the sense that you're not in a vehicle surrounded by walls and windows just driving through and people just say hey and you know if your windows are down they can talk to you. On a bicycle you're fully interactive, you can stop, you can pull over. Uh, I actually enjoy it much better. On your, on your bike there's a chance to stop and have conversations which I have found this summer where you know I'll be riding back into the office and there's Chuck Fox, a fellow cyclist, in front of the theater and we'll stop and we'll We'll chat, or um, uh, yeah, there's just more. There's more opportunities for conversation. So I think, from a community standpoint, it enhances your community experience and all the beauties of living in a small town and being familiar with the people that are around you. Uh, I think you get to experience that at a different level when you're on a bike. So. Uh, some of the best conversations I remember were those that were so absorbing uh, that one would get off one's bike. <laughs> drag it alongside one to continue or kind of like a, a you know just to slow down and and chat as you got somewhere anyway, as I was those were the kind of discussions that were happening on and off bikes in Cambridge and of course I think you're right to suggest or imply that that was a shaping experience for me outside on a bike <laughs> but, you know if you're out riding your bike it's pretty quick to be able to put on the brakes have a little conversation on the sidewalk feel a little bit um, closer to the people in the community. I mean, again, it definitely makes you more more aware of your surroundings as you're going around. Um, for me, something that I kind of catch that I wouldn't have kept caught regularly is probably uh, the people in my neighborhood. Um, but as far as natural environments, I definitely am able to spend more time going by Taylor Lake, and I'm able to. But uh, all of the uh, all the geese, that's pretty awesome. Watching just how many stop by, it's almost like a. It's almost like a roadside yeah, Take in the natural aspect of the 14 miles between uh, home and work. Instead of uh, listening to the radio or music in the car or whatnot, I'm just listening to the world outside. Like yeah, you definitely see a lot of roadkill. Uh, don't realize how much is out there. Also, how much money you could possibly make uh, picking up five cent cans. <laughs> Number dozens of uh, situations that you wouldn't have seen if you were driving a car. Uh, you couldn't see, you couldn't hear, um, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't follow. You know, if you see that hawk coming down off a ridge and, you know, you're on your bike, you can very easily, while you're pedaling, um, you know, take it all in. Um, I've seen lots of wild um, animals in many different situations. Um, rainbows. Uh, I'm not so sure that, I, I guess when I'm driving, one will occasionally see a rainbow, but I know that when, I, when I'm biking, I guess I'm looking out for them. 
And there are all sorts of like rainbows, but there are also those lovely sunspots that one. And uh, the same thing with uh, birds. Uh, see lots of birds biking, and ones that matter, uh, herons. I see everything. Everything that's between my house and work, or is in my car, I don't see any of it. Uh, Willow Path coming back from the library along Keller Lake is um, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's such a beautiful campus, such a beautiful community, and I think it's so um, accommodating for bikers. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's one aspect of campus that sort of has me romanticizing about my student days or being here more than any other. You are exposed to the elements, so if it's you know sunny out, it's great. If it's rainy out, you're going to get wet. For me, if but the weather's bad, if it's cold or whatnot, and I think about not doing it, it usually takes about 15 minutes into the ride that I realize that it was a good idea. It's just uh, once you get things moving and uh, get into the flow of the ride, you just forget about the nasty weather, and you're having a good time even if you don't know why. That in weather with a little bit of snow on the ground, I guess I enjoy being on a bike if you're on the flat. Like here to the barge, I'm certainly gonna bike, bike even though it, it's snowy. And I think I do that partly just because of, you know, very shallow egoist and you, you like the thrill of navigating on a little snowy, icy surface. And you're right, that it does make the hot coffee taste hotter and better. The benefits so of riding far outweigh than any inconvenience or slight chill you get when you ride. My commute is mostly flat. Um, I live on top of a hill, so I have to finish my commute every day with a uh, mile climb. Um, but the rest of it is all just rolling farmland, serene pastures. And I hate hills. Well, actually, I love downhills. And, and, and I wonder, like to me, one of the, one of the Edenic punishments of God was the, it was, he probably created, I don't think, did Eden have hills? To best compare the differences that exist in how to get to class, we've staged a race between a car, a cyclist, and a Colgate cruiser rider. They will be racing from Broad Street to Lawrence Hall, simulating a typical Go. daily commute. And they're off. Look at the car spewing all those emissions already. And you would never be able to hear the geese on Taylor Lake over that noise. This comparison is being held by public roads, so the car and the bike must obey all traffic laws. Ben has a distinct advantage in his ability to cut through campus via walking paths. The car, however, must travel all the way up Oak Drive to Owen Hall before heading over to Lawrence Hall. There are two point-of-view cameras incorporated into the race, one in the car and one on Ben's bike. This way, we are able to see exactly what our competitors are seeing at any given point in time. Ben, not having to deal with traffic at the stoplight, takes an early lead. As the car finally gets on its way, the view of the dashboard is not as nice as being able to enjoy the breeze or even stop and interact with other members of the community. Clearly, Ben's in a rush today and unfortunately doesn't have time for a conversation. Let's check in with our cruiser rider. We better hope the bus is on time if he wants to stand a chance in this race. As we rejoin the team in the car, our passengers seem to be enjoying the view from behind glass and headrests. As Ben now approaches the library, this next section of the course will prove difficult. The hill is steep and will be challenging to ascend. But then again, he is getting a great physical workout during his commute to class. In order to keep pace with those driving in the car, he must push extremely hard here up this hill. As the car approaches Olin Hall, the race is still extremely close. Ben, however, has had the pleasure of being able to enjoy this very nice fall day. As a school bus drives by, the occupants of the car can sample some of its diesel fumes through the open windows. The finish to this race is shaping up to be very close, as you can see from the camera on Ben's bike. The car, however, must obey the speed limit of 15 miles an hour. Let's see how much progress our cruiser rider has made. Ben's making the final push up the hill, but the car is also fast approaching on academic drive. In the final yards of the race, Ben not only pulls out the wind, but has been able to really connect with other students and wildlife during his commute. I'm sure those in the car have enjoyed their view of headrests and sampling of diesel fumes. At least Will was able to enjoy his time outdoors. You know, it's 
just a special, uh, special time when you get on your bike and you know see some of the things that uh, are every day happening, but nobody else notices. It just takes a little longer, but you know you're doing something that's beneficial for yourself and the environment around you. I mean, I, I enjoy being on my bicycle, whether it's a Saturday morning ride with my wife um, or, you know, the five minutes that I'm on it between campus and my office or the two minutes that I'm on it between my office and home, there's nothing better. Um, so, again, I wish I had a longer commute. I don't think, did Eden have hills? See, well, I have to look into that. I'm going to have to audit uh, Professor Bryce's uh, Western Traditions class and read the Bible or something and find out if Eden had hills. I don't think so. Or if it did, they all went down.